friends, it's Happy Tuki and welcome to Throwback Tuesday. Today we're gonna play Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper. It's not like a very... I mean, it is a, an old game. It's like a game made in 2009. And I figured out why not. It's Throwback Tuesday and I really love Sherlock Holmes. I love everything about Sherlock Holmes and all the games and everything. So... Let's go. In the name of my health and yours, Holmes, stop smoking so much. There is more fog in our apartment than in the street. You are right, Watson, but this evening is never ending and I have nothing to do but make smoke rings. A more amusing pastime would suit better, but my doctor is against it. Perhaps a little tune on the violin. My heart is not in it tonight, Watson. Have you noticed how this cigarette burns? Would you not say it is like a life being consumed? I mean, how it's many lives will your end lives. tonight in London? How many crimes will be committed within the life of a single cigarette? Ah, the vanity of existence. It is but complaints and smoke, the meager panache of its sickly soul. The tobacco is giving you very somber thoughts. I am certain that this inactivity will not last. Let's retire. You'll be in better humor tomorrow. <laughs> Reason speaks. Let's to bed. Let's to bed? This is how you say it is go to bed. Let's to bed. So you know that in reality, Jack the Ripper wasn't found. So now we are gonna conclude. We are gonna resolve the, the mystery. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Like for a game made in 2009, it's, it's really cool. I don't know. I like I like the vibes, you know. I think this is the White Chapel. White Chapel, London. I also have a little drink here to help me conclude uh, the mystery, yeah. And also this is the fourth game I am recording this day, so I'm a little bit tired, so I'm sorry for that. But we are here to enjoy the game, not to, I don't know, to be like a clown or something. Hello. Come this way, my lovely. No, I don't want to. a good time. I don't Wait, want to. Let me help you. Oh God, no. Oh. Oh, it's my hair that pleases you. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. That's disgusting. Oh no. Oh, I hear the sound. Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. And the fact that nobody saw a thing. Baker Street, September 1st. The news is as dark as the sky, Holmes. An inquest has been opened into the murder of a poor woman in the East End. The unfortunate girl was discovered last night, lying in the street, still warm. Oh. The murderer was filled with an incredible savagery. Oh, the article gave me shivers down my spine. The inspectors in charge of the case don't seem to have even the slightest lead. As always, a similar murder the police took place is not doing a, a thing. Ago. Ah, love. A romantic walk, a kiss in the moonlight, a polite refusal, a terrible anger, and a hanging. This area of Whitechapel is a disgrace to London. The government should take serious note of what is going on there. Whitechapel? This woman was found in Whitechapel? Yes, indeed. Bucks Row, to be specific. Then it was not a question of romance, but of commerce. Unless these women actually take pleasure in the vice, the female nature is completely... Completely Holmes. what, Holmes? Do you hear yourself? A woman is dead under unspeakable circumstances. No less than any other, she was a human and yes. one of Her Majesty's subjects. 
She was a None human. None of these street walkers of which you speak have any other way to survive but by selling their bodies. You know as well as I that our era is not a gentle one, and these women don't have much to look forward to. Some grace, if you would. Do not refuse them your compassion. Do not say another word, my dear Watson. We shall leave immediately for Whitechapel. I really Chapel. love the, the voice of, the, of the... No, I think it would be better Sherlock to arrive Holmes. there a bit later once night has fallen. At the moment, the spot will be overrun by police officers and spectators. It would be impossible to investigate properly. Then where are we going, Holmes? The best thing to do would be to head to the police station and attempt to get a copy of the preliminary reports. But the article in the Star seemed quite complete to me. You must know, Watson, that journalists often draw conclusions from the facts without a proper understanding of how to do this delicate task. Okay. We must obtain the reports from the inspector in charge, as well as those from the coroner. Very well, Holmes, but all the same. It seems to me that I have a map of London somewhere, Watson. Can you find it and locate Whitechapel while I get ready? Hmm. You are too I kind, need to Holmes. change the Searching camera again. Your mess? I forgot again. Let me just change the camera. Oh no, I can't. I'm sorry, but because it's an old game, I can't like change between thingies. So I'm sorry, this, but this episode. Um, this episode you, you will have to bear with me because of the subtitles. If I will try to leave now, everything will be lost. So yeah. Special edition, the Whitechapel Horror, the third crime of a man who must be a maniac. Woman learned to pastry to be butchered, the latest victim in that fight opening. Oh, okay, I'm not gonna read everything. So, let me... No, 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 no. First person perspective, thank you. Control Dr. Watson. To move in the game, just left key. Okay. So, map? Come on. Oh, oh no, I need the map first. Well, oh. well. Holmes has received some French champagne. I love with a champagne. Card, a gift from a young admirer. Oh. Signed Raoul Dandressy. Who on earth could that be? A it's... map of London. Let's go to the Whitechapel. And this is the I police station. I found the map, Holmes, and I was able to locate the Whitechapel police station. How convenient. Congratulations, Watson. What? Come, the game is afoot. You can read the article to me on the way. Whitechapel, September 1st. We have arrived, Watson, in Whitechapel. Ele uh, Not 11 very bright. AM. What cold! Brr, a typical London morning. Come, Watson, let's find this police station. Let's find the police station. I control Sherlock. Oh my goodness, Watson, you're so little. I love your hat, though. I love your hat. Knock, knock. Sherlock well, Holmes. This station here. isn't very well kept, I say. It's yeah, a local it's outpost, not. Watson. The daily tasks that confront these constables are not the easiest, and they are poorly paid. Poor guys, they're poorly paid. Hi! Gentlemen, Hello. welcome. Hello, I would like to speak with the Chief Inspector, if you please. Constable Humphreys here. I am the only one in at the moment. Oh, what do you want with the Chief? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am. Sherlock Holmes? The detective that I read about I in the papers? You know me well, that's a treat, that is. You come about the Buck Road case, have you? Indeed, we... No. Not at all. Uh, we were just Shush. passing by chance. You say that there was a crime recently. You don't know. You must be the only folk in London who haven't heard. It won't be long until you find the culprit, no doubt. Nothing is less certain. Suspects, zero. Clues, zero. It's not good for us, especially not in this district. Okay, the report. Listen, this isn't what I came here for, but if I can be of service, in a confidential capacity, of course, if you can entrust me with a copy of the preliminary reports, I could study them and return later with my conclusions. Hmm, it's just that these are official documents. I can't take a decision like that without the inspectors. The sooner we know the facts in the file, the sooner we can be of help, my friend. So, if you are Sherlock Holmes, you can find anything, isn't that true? Of course With I can find anything. magnifying glass, footprints? My performances are often embellished by my biographer. Oh, good. Good. I will give you the reports, but could you do me a small favour first? During my rounds, I dropped a leather folder containing some papers. Uh, nothing of importance, but it's a big mistake. 
I would go looking for it myself, but I am stuck here on duty. I must have lost it near the seedy boarding house not far from here. Left when you leave the courtyard and left again in the lane. Okay. Perhaps you could go ask around. Okay. We shall see what we can do. We shall see. Are we going to go look for these documents? Why not? It'll give us an occasion to take a tour of the district, Watson. Let's go. Why is there a rocking thingy for the, 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 the... How is this called? The thingy for the babies. Hi. Hi. Hmm. Oh. I have nothing to ask. Why won't you give him, like, some money? He's poor. Um, so he said left, first to left, and then left again, right? So, so here. Hi. Good day, sir. You wouldn't happen to have seen a leather folder on the ground around here, would you? Good day, gentlemen. Finley, caretaker of this building. Here to serve. And yes, less than an hour ago. But some of the local urchins picked it up and God only knows where it might be now. That's unfortunate. This police bag contained documents that the local police will miss. Your inspectors? Not at all. I am Dr. Watson, and this is Sherlock Holmes, the detective. Sherlock Holmes, the great detective. You must be here about last night's murder. Have you discovered the identity of the poor woman? Indeed, I'd only to read the papers. Mine is dated from this morning, and it does not say who it is. Okay. I'm not really engaged in this case, but if I can help the police, I will do so willingly. Oh, to be sure. I've been told that Inspector Aberline is in charge. A very capable man. So, according to you, I have no chance of finding this folder, then? Indeed. But I, on the other hand, should be able to find it. You. Do me a favor in exchange. A vagrant. Oh my goodness, we're gonna do favors for everybody now. Looks not far from my windows. He coughs, howls, sometimes even sings. He's quite hefty, and I don't dare approach him. I've lost three tenants because of him. If it's you who speaks to the police, they will take this matter more seriously. Tell them okay. about the captain. They'll know who you're talking about. In the meantime, I'll find your police bag. Okay. Another way to permit murder, yeah. Murder. Sure. Let's go to the police station. Uh, let me just take just a moment. Okay, so like now it should be okay. I moved the camera. Good, 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 good. So we need to. Okay, so tell. Okay. We need to go to the police station. Okay. Uh, go there. Go. Hello, Inspector. I need something so, in exchange. Have you found my police bag? No. Captain. Not quite yet. Do you know a vagrant who goes by the name of the Captain? Captain? Yes, an old sailor, strong as a Turk and tattooed from head to toe. Oh. The drink has turned him into a derelict. He appears to be causing some problems for the caretaker of the building at the end of the street. What do you want us to do? Every night, stairwells, halls and porches become public dormitories and people don't only come to sleep. I believe this man has a niece who puts him up sometimes. Her lodgings are in Commercial Street, right after the alley with the boarding house. You won't forget my folder, will you? Yeah, sure. Do you believe this woman will agree to have her uncle stay with her? No idea. Oh well, let's go see her just the same. That man has a beer in his hand. You do you, man. You do you. Hello, gentlemen. So he said after the boarding, so this is the boarding. So he said after this. Uh... There. Oh. This is where the niece of the captain must live. How convenient, like she is right there on the window. Hello. Oh, day, miss. Would you happen to be the niece of the man known as the captain? Oh, yes, that would be me. What has he done this time? He isn't... Oh my god, I'm on my way. Okay. 
Hello, lady. Miss, we have come to ask if you could have your uncle come live with you. He sleeps under the windows of a boarding house, causes the caretaker no end of problems. I know. I I've lodged him for a while, and he was the same here. My landlord made me kick him out. I'm ashamed, you know. I never should have given the state of his health. It coughs day and night. There okay. might be a way to calm his cough. I am a doctor. I could examine him. He went to see a doctor at the clinic. But the medicine costs too much. I can hardly pay my win. We will see to it. Where might your uncle be found? I don't know. He must be in the vicinity, but I don't know exactly where. Why are you screaming like that? We will find him. Did you hear that oh, scream? This is serious. Why are you find screaming like that? In Whitechapel. Oh my goodness, what is happening here? Come, dear doctor, let's trust to our lucky star. Moreover, we also have our informers, remember? Are you referring to those brats to whom you are always giving charity? Exactly, my secret police. Some of them are surely roam in this area. It suffices to find them. Okay. Oh, you. Hello. Hello, young man. How are you? I recognize him. It's the lad who sells newspapers, who is always calling outside our windows at Baker Street, early in the morning. Hello, Mr. Holmes. It's a treat to see you again. What can I do? Uh, Would you happen to know an old sailor who goes by the name of the Captain, a poor man who hits the bottle a bit hard? Of course, Mr. Holmes. He's there at the end of the street. Round to the left he is, but be careful. He can be a tough customer, that one. Very good, my young man. The doctor will give you a little something. Watson? <laughs> huh? Give him money. See, Holmes? Is he always such a skin flint with you, Mr. Holmes? All thanks to you, Mr. Holmes. Anytime you need me. He say all he says Holmes instead of Holmes. So he said this and left? Or am I just stupid? Am I just stupid or what? Hi. I can hear someone coughing more than his natural Oh, is he? Voice. Yes, Watson. The poor man cannot be too far away. Is he? Is he? Are you? Yeah. It's him. If, in order to listen to us, this man imposes as condition that we find his pet cockroach, uh, there will be another murder in Whitechapel today, Watson. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> He state. is in a critical state, Holmes. He has barely a month left. Is there a way, dear doctor, to ensure that this last month passes in silence? Really, Holmes, sometimes you... Oh, really? I will make note of some medicine to get immediately that will relieve his pain. Very well. I will locate an apothecary or a clinic. Okay. Mm. Oh, how convenient. What is this? Lucy, boarding house... Dead end and the clinic. This building is a clinic. Yeah, I can see that because you pointed it on the map. No one is here. Oh, okay. Hello. Good day Good to day, you. Good day, sir. Doctor Gibbons. You aren't from around these parts. Hello, Dr. Gibbons. Indeed, Gibbles. Doctor. It is for someone from your neighborhood that I am here, though. His doctor asked that I acquire some medicine on his behalf. I have the note here. Dr. Watson? Not from round here, neither. This medication is quite dear. Certain documents are necessary to obtain them for free. Okay. I don't have it. You'll have to accept my spare change. Will it be enough? Enough to relieve your patient for a month. Would you like me to make this prescription yeah, available that after be that time? Yeah, that would be actually really enough. According to Dr. Watson, that won't be necessary. The possibility of a recovery? A definitive no. one, yes. There, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where, where? It's rather quiet here. An Is unusual right? chain of events. The majority of the people hereabouts went out last night to see the great fire at the warehouse. The patients that I was minding and my staff were no exception. The former were dramatically healed and the latter ended up sick. And with the murder last night, most of the people who weren't working wandered over to the scene of the crime. Oh. Their little aches and pains will wait until tonight or tomorrow. A squalid murder, it would seem. Just like what this area has become. Okay, thank you, Doctor. My thanks, Doctor. Not at all. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so... map. Uh, here. Hello, my dear Watson. I'm here with the medicine. 
Here is the medication, Watson. Is our man movable? He should be able to stand in a few minutes and will no longer be suffering from his cough before long. Consider the affair resolved. Accompany him to his nieces while I return to the boarding house and then join me at the police station. Okay. Let's return to the boarding house. Let's go to the boarding house. Also, if you see me like knowing a lot of things, is because like how to go from here to here is because I'm I played almost all games of <laughs> Sherlock Holmes because I love them so much. Okay, so boarding house here. Uh, I enjoyed him very, very much. I have good news for you, Mr. Finley. We have sent the captain to stay with a relative, and he shouldn't bother you for a while. I also have some good news. I have your police. Bag. How convenient you, is that? Am I right? Oh, it was nothing. Tell me, one of my wife's friends lost. Another day, Finley. Another day. Let's go to the police station. I'm busy, Finley. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> Hello, sir. Let's go to the police station. Hello. <laughs> uh, what Commercial is this? Street. Commercial Street, okay. You look awesome. <laughs> look great. Hello, I have your Are you sure bag. it's the police bag that you lost? Yes, but someone attempted to force it open. They didn't succeed, but now the lock is stuck. Perhaps you could... Hmm, let's see. Okay. Uh... Okay. Um... Huh. Interesting. So we have here a puzzle. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> um, maybe it's one, but I don't think it's two. Maybe it's like, um, like one, but like two, three, four, five, six. So I need to move the two here. Two here. But I need to move like the three here. So put the two here. Three. Well oh, oh, I did it. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Good job, think me. Of it, my friend. Good job, me. Now give me the fucking so, reports. The reports. Why don't you wait till the inspectors get back? You would certainly learn more. No, give if me the I reports. If I wanted to meet the inspectors, I would have done so. So give me the preliminary reports, and above all, do not mention my visit to anyone. Is that clear? Sure, if that's what you want. Here are the reports. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, so death of Polly Nicholas, 31 uh, August 1888. Autopsy report by Dr. Henley. Okay. Her throat had been cut from left to right, to the extent cuts being on the left side, the windpipe gullet and the spinal cord being cut through. Ouch. A bruise apparently of a thumb being on the right lower jaw, also on the left open from the center of the bottom of the uh, cut open from the center of the bottom of the ribs the along right side under the pelvis oh my goodness to the left of the stomach there the wound was checked oh my goodness okay the small stabs on private part oh apparently done with a strong bladed knife supposed to have been done by some left hand left handed person Oh, sorry. Sorry, that was my alarm. Okay, so the dead being almost instantaneous. Okay, cool. Have you obtained the preliminary reports? Yes, we'll read them on the go. Let's to the scene of the crime at Bucks Row, Watson. Okay, let's go to the scene of a crime. Can I go from here? Oh, cool. Okay, uh, okay. So let's go to the to the crime scene, and let's see if someone is there. Oh, people are there. But what are all these people doing here, Holmes? Apparently, they came to see the scene of the crime. What like, about they're us? just... Aren't we going to see it? We will return this evening, Watson. The circumstances should be ideal for carrying out our little experiments. Okay. Well, Watson, we are at the scene of the Polly Nichols murder. Row, Imagine the victim lying at the spot where she was found and try to discern all of the clues we can. 
Watson, you are a writer. I am therefore entrusting you with our deduction board. It will help us to establish certain facts. Okay. Understood, Holmes. Okay. So, what is this? No signs of blood. Okay. So, no traces of blood on the walls. Okay. Uh... No marks on the ground. The ground is muddy. Okay. Oh my the goodness. body was lying on its back, legs straight and slightly apart. The skirt had been lifted up to the middle of the body. The left hand was touching the barn door. The body was still warm. Let's reread the preliminary report for the details on the wounds inflicted upon this poor woman. Uh, okay. Here. Uh, okay. Okay. So the corpse was still warm, no footsteps on the ground, the murderer cut open Pauline Negro's throat. So the victim was down, the murder the murder warm warmed the victim up, the victim wasn't dragged. The victim wasn't dragged, that's for sure. Uh murder took place in the daytime, murder took place on the premises, the murderer moved. No, it was here. Okay, now, dirty and damp ground, uh, he could not have had relations on the ground, the murderer threw water on the ground, uh, this I think, yeah, okay, uh, there is a black bonnet near the left hand, so she had her bonnet in, let's her look head. at this oh poor woman goodness. more closely, okay, uh, there is a bruise at the level of the right maxilla, Ew. The tongue is swollen. There is a bruise bruised. on the left cheek. And the, the throat cut. was slit from left to right. There they are two incisions. Cuts. A small pool of blood, six inches in diameter. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Uh, is that everything? A small pool of okay, blood. Okay, yeah, I said that already. Okay. Anything else? No, apparently not. Uh, anything else? Okay, so let's see. A little pool of blood and the victim had her throat slit. Okay, so this. The blood didn't flow in strong part. The murderer wanted to drain of it. No. I think it's this one. No traces of blood on the walls, the victim had her throat slit, so... Um, the victim didn't have her throat slit while standing, yes. Um, was dead before being stretched out and moved? Was killed by having... no, because he already had, had like the... The... the, the, the how is he called? Like the mouth, the... The thingy from the mouth. <laughs> I can I don't know what it's called. Yeah, so that is good. But it was already like bloated, you know. So that's okay. Okay, the victim ha has a bruise on the right jawbone. On the right, so like the right. So he was supposed to like put it like that, so he's right-handed. The mother beat the victim. The, mur the bruise was caused by hand pressure with the fingers. The mother dragged, uh, gagged the victim by gripping thigh. Uh, this or this? Like, mm, I think this one. Okay. The th wait, uh, yeah, the thong. The thing from the mouth is the thong. So the thong is bloated, so she was strangled. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? My dear Watson, can I look like. Like, can I look? Okay, so here is okay. There. This spot is deserted, Holmes. The prostitutes only come here to exercise. Oh my goodness, you're kind of a douchebag, but okay. Uh, this. Okay. Uh, anything else? There is only one street light lit on this street, Watson, and this spot is particularly poorly lit. Well, yeah. Watson, we have found all of the possible clues, I think. But we will now attempt to recreate the scene of the murder. Come closer, Watson. I have to make you up. What? <laughs> what? You are joking, Holmes. What are you doing, Holmes? 
<laughs> I feel ridiculous, Holmes. <laughs> okay, yeah, you look kind now, of ridiculous. Now, Watson, come and stand here in front of me. You shall play the role of the poor woman and I shall play that of the murderer. Let's try to reconstruct the facts to ensure the final result corresponds indisputably to the way that Polly Nichols was killed. Okay, let's do this. Um, so, he was standing. Nick, no, Nick, yes. Uh, no, he was standing like that. But he was... Uh, left or right? I think it was... Like right hand. Yes, it's quite possible the events occurred like this. Okay. Uh, and then the victim went down and he had the thingy and like this. Or the throat, or this, or throat. Maybe like this, with the left or right. I think like I this. I hope that, as with the real murder, nobody had to witness all of that, Watson. <laughs> if the murderer used his right hand to stride his victim, there wasn't much room. Okay. So the the left. murderer had enough room to inflict the wounds to the neck, and these wounds suggest the left hand was used. Uh huh. Okay. So he strangled her, and then okay. So my dear Watson, now that we have found he used all his clues, first nothing remains but to subject them to our most likely hypotheses in order to. So he used first. He used his right hand, and then his left hand. So he's ambidexter. Uh, or how is it called? Okay, so the murderer was standing in front of the victim to strangle her. So he used his right hand because that was that that was what we predicted when we did the thingy. Okay, and then so he strangled her with his right hand. So. Is he? Mm. He's a strong man, so it is the left hand that prevented the victim from screaming. With the and with the right hand, he strangled her. So maybe he's ambidexter. Okay. Okay. So this is here and here. A black bonnet near the left-handed for the lit street. The victim was holding her bonnet in her hand at the time of the murder. Yeah, because we saw that on the little flashback there. The victim was asking for something. The victim wasn't afraid. The victim collected the bonnet from the ground. No. The victim wasn't afraid. Um, was unconscious. Uh, didn't have a... No. Had her bonnet in her hand and was ready to exercise. The victim was most probably dead before being laid down. Once the heart stopped, gravity drained the body slowly, not in a heavy spurt that would have stained half the street. Thank you, Holmes. I understand why you told me not to change clothes. <laughs> Do you realize that our behavior didn't alarm anyone? The victim's ordeal was even more discreet. By acting in silence, we have confirmed something. The crime definitely took place here. Yep, it the victim right, and her murderer right here. were able to come here without making any noise, and afterwards the murder took place without the slightest cry being uttered. Come, Watson, let's go home. We have spent far too long in this sinister alley. Yep, and you did pretty terrible stuff. And so, my dear Watson? The day and night which we passed in Whitechapel were enlightening, weren't they? An I love the background that I most music. Certainly, will never relate. To be this is actually the music I'm listening when I'm woman. reading. Something. I prefer not to speak of it further. But have we really learned anything about the murderer? Obviously, a man, given the necessary strength. We have little to go on, at least no more than the police. But in my opinion, Inspector Abiline has a trick or two up his sleeve. No, I want to talk about the facts and what we can draw from them. We know where the crime was committed and under what conditions. I would like to ask you about the possible motives for the crime. According to you, Watson, what could have pushed the murderer to act in such a way? Mm. Okay, so yeah, if you want to... Uh, the music on the background is actually really, really nice, so... We can actually um, look for the 
Sherlock Holmes ambient music in your CDs and it's perfect for reading. Okay, so let's see. The victim suffered horrible mutilations. Uh, that could be madness. Homicidal insanity, Holmes. It is indubitable that the man who did this to Polly Nichols is not of his full senses. No, he's not. The victim lived in misery, so theft? Mm. Theft, perhaps. I have a hard time believing that someone would attack poor Polly so fiercely so. just to rob her of a few coins. Uh, credible motive, in a, even if it, it's a fear that Sherlock Holmes doesn't know. Could black be black magic? magic? I'm not terribly interested in the occult or black magic. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to this motive. Okay. The victim was an occasional prostitute without family or ties, so... A personal love? drama. Love can certainly lead to many a drama, but we have to consider the fact that the victim didn't know her attacker. True. And the resentment can lead to irreparable acts. Revenge, Holmes? Revenge could be a possible motive, but with one small reservation. We have reason to believe that the victim considered her murderer to be a typical client. Okay. So... Now we need to see what of those could be or not. So he said theft, no, because she was poor. Madness, yes, and black magic, he said yes, and maybe Elementary. revenge. Very well, Watson. Nice. <laughs> I think that we've exhausted the topic. Take a rest and we'll speak again later. To make the puzzles, you actually really, ah, really it would seem that the investigation needs is to focus home. on what Holmes Yesterday's says. Yesterday's star said that a suspect is in the hands of the police. A man with a rather sinister reputation. I was about to join you in your optimistic outlook until you informed me that the good news came from the press, Watson. <laughs> but surely they wouldn't invent the fact that the police are holding a suspect? Or the act I mean, the media. To. You will yeah, have the exact can. answer to these two questions in less than 50 seconds, Watson. Pardon? <gasps> Enter, Inspector. He's so smart. Good day. Good day to you, sir. Like Watson, is so allow me to smart. introduce Inspector Aberline, Inspector Dr. Watson. Inspector? To what do we owe the honor of your presence, Inspector? I heard that the two of you made your way to Whitechapel a few days ago. Your arrival, you are aware, coincides with a very serious affair which our police service is going to great lengths to solve and which is creating strong tensions in the area. Pardon me, but haven't you arrested someone? A certain leather apron? Leather apron? Absolutely not. The man who hides behind this name is indeed being actively searched for by the force. Besides, nothing at the moment suggests that he is the Bucks Row murderer. There, you've been enlightened, Watson. Okay. Now it is our turn to answer Inspector Aberline's questions. Indeed. I will be brief and precise. Do you intend to investigate this case, or have you already started? It is to be of service to a friend that I went to Whitechapel. We did, out of, of curiosity, I'm gonna... familiarize ourselves with the preliminary reports, and we made our way to the scene of the crime. Our conclusions are slim, as are the clues. Having not been officially appointed by a client, I believe that my intervention in this business will end there. Very well. To be frank, you take the weight off my shoulders by distancing yourself from the case. Sure. Our image isn't very good, to say nothing of what the press puts us through. Thus, if overnight they found out that you were on the case, people would turn against us. And they would sure. test me, overwhelm me, and finally make me out to be responsible for the inevitable failure such a scenario entails. Neither you nor I wish for this to happen. I know that your time is precious, Inspector. I will send you a note regarding my conclusions shortly. With pleasure. Gentlemen? Do you think that he will find the murderer? The chances are slim to non-existent. It is seven days now, short of a confession gonna break the murderer case. himself. <laughs> this is why we're here. Further. You heard the Inspector Watson. My presence in Whitechapel would hinder, which doesn't mean that we will drop the case. We will never drop the case, no. How is that? The Inspector spoke of me, but not of us. It is oh. you, Watson, who will lead the investigation tonight. It is you who will bring to the police station the little note that I will write regarding our conclusions. Despite the late hour, there is nothing to stop you from making inquiries about this famous leather apron while you are there. Leather apron. Okay. So, I think... Leather apron. The sense of fear which the murder of the unfortunate woman Nicholas has thrown over the neighborhood. Okay. Where are you, Sherlock? Okay. <laughs> So I'm gonna leave this part here because the game is very long, but I really enjoyed this. So if you wanna 
have a break from the GTA or other stupid games, we can play this on Throwback Tuesday and actually break the case because we are smart and we work with Sherlock Holmes himself. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this if you do and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, to subscribe if you're new, it will be so nice to have you here and as always, I hope I'll see you all on the next one, bye!